Well, it's John Heaton, and today I thought I'd have a bit of fun and put together an imaginary kind of worst of the Beatles solo careers, uh, chosen 14 tracks. Just a few ground rules before I get started. I mean, I, I could have cheated and just picked 14 tracks from the last 20 years from Paul and Ringo, because some of their albums, la latter day albums, are not particularly special, but I didn't want to do that. Uh, I've only got one Ringo track in my selection here. And for the most part, I've chosen these songs from what I consider to be significant albums, which at least had a, a chance of hitting the charts or having some chart success. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure if anyone would buy this album. I certainly wouldn't, but uh, it's just a bit of fun and I don't expect you to agree. In fact, I'm expecting quite a few of you to get quite upset with this video if, you, if you're a particular fan of some of the songs I've chosen. But anyway, I've called the, called the album Far You, Solo Beatles, Low Lights, and it opens with Far You from Egypt Station, which I think is by quite a distance the worst song Paul McCartney has ever done in his career. Um, lyrically in particular, it's really annoying. I don't know what he was thinking. I just find it annoying, and, and that's one of the criteria I, I chose, uh, I used to select this, these songs. Um, I always avoid it when I'm playing Egypt Station. And the second track is the last track on side two of Gone Troppo. Now, Gone Troppo is a real mixed bag because it's got a couple of real gems, but it's got a couple of clangers on it as well as we'll see. And I, well, according to me anyway, this song is actually, if you believe it, a White Album outtake. And on the Isha demos, they're doing a kind of a, a slow acoustic version, which is nothing special. I could see why they left it off the White Album. I'm not sure why he chose to resurrect it because it's not as strong as Not Guilty, which was on the self-titled. It's not half as strong. It's just a dreary song. I'm sorry, George. I hate to use that word, but, um, you know, the words are uninspired. The tune is uninspired. There's nothing, there's nothing good about it, in my opinion. But now, the number three is a Paul McCartney track again, and I've gone with Don't Be Careless Love. So I think of all the Elvis Costello McCartney collaborations, this is easily the weakest. I think this just song goes nowhere, particularly melodically. And the lyrics aren't particularly interesting either. I just, um, you know, compared to some of the gems they did, like The Lovers They Never Were and Mistress and Maid and My Brave Face, this one is uh, very much the weak link, in, according to me anyway, and, and the weakest track on that particular album, Flowers in the Dirt. Number four, I've gone with a track from Cloud Nine, and it's the Shanghai Surprise. I'm not sure if it's a reject or if it was used in Shanghai Surprise. It's Breath Away from Heaven. Either way, it's... Um, just a boring song, I'm afraid, and I always tend to skip it when I'm playing Cloud Nine. Well, skip the last track as well, got a mindset on you, if I'm being honest. Um, so I don't think it, there's anything of particular merit about this, this song, and that's why it's on the list. Number five, this is going to upset some of you probably, from the Off the Ground album, I've chosen Biker Like an Icon which musically sh shuffles along quite nicely. I just find the lyric subject matter annoying. You know, he's talking about a girl who worships a kind of long-haired biker, biker like an icon. And, you know, Paul McCartney in his career has often told stories of, you know, third party people and been very interesting or amusing like Ogle D or Maxwell. Um, but in this case, I just, uh, I just find the lyric annoying. And I'm sorry to those of you who like this song. Because as I say, it's not bad musically. Number six, we're going to go back to Gone Troppo and choose um, the opening track, Wake Up My Love, which was an, a pretty uninspired attempt to get au courant with the music scene, you know, with all the synths and stuff, and trying to have a hit single. It failed spectacularly. Um, and I don't think he should have tried to do that. I think he should have just stuck to his... What he normally does in his solo career is ignore the critics, ignore the fashions, and just do George Harrison songs as he does best. But on here, he ch chose to open this album, by the way, for which he gave no promotion whatsoever. He chose to open it with this track, trying to be a commercial song, and uh, I just find it quite annoying, and I, I, would, I would virtually always skip it. Not always, but most of the time. Um, Closing side one, we've got One Day at a Time from Lennon. Uh, I just find this falsetto vocal off-putting and, well, that's, that, there's actually a version on the anthology, I think it is, the Lennon anthology with him singing it in a normal voice, and it's not much better 
that way either, but with the falsetto it's even worse, with the something different female backing chorus who are annoying at the best of times, particularly on this track. Um, somewhat saved by a sax solo in the middle, but really uh, insipid words, insipid tune, nothing, Elton John covered it but didn't do much with it. I just don't like this track, it's by far the weakest track on that particular album for me. Side two, because I'm going to open with, and I don't have this on physical media, Shanghai Surprise. In fact, I'm not even sure if it's available. It's, it's, I know it's on Spotify as a bonus track on the Cloud Nine album. It was from the Shanghai Surprise movie, so if you watch that movie, you'll see the song performed, um, or at least you'll hear it. Um, but I just think it's one of George's least inspired songs of his whole career, and, and that's why it's on here. Number two, we're going to go to Chaos and Creation. And the track English Tea, I just find it annoying. Th again, th musically it's quite bouncy, quite a nice tune, but um, you know the words I just find annoying. Uh, this song musically reminds me a bit of um, Three Little Maids from School from Gilbert and Sullivan, but McCartney's lyrics lack Gilbert's wit and humour, um, not, to to, not to mention the visual aspect of watching the Mikado performed on stage. Um, English Tea, to me, does absolutely nothing, and I always skip it when I play that particular album. Number three on side two, we're going to go back, I'm afraid, to Gon Troppo and choose the third track on side two, which is, talk about innocuous, uh, Baby Don't Run Away, Baby Don't Run Away, you know, Baby Don't Run Away from me is the chorus. Um, Billy Preston is trying to do these kind of emotional background vocals, but even he can't save it. It's just a dreary true tune. There I go with that word again, I'm afraid. Gone Truppa is really quite interesting for being containing some really great George tracks, like Mystical One, and that's the way it goes, and some, some of the worst of his career. Sorry, that, that, that track does nothing for me. Number four, we got the Ringo track, as far as we can go, which was actually a 78 outtake from the Bad Boy Sessions, I believe, and it just turned up on Old Wave. Don't know why he resurrected. It wasn't even good enough to make Bad Boy. It w wasn't really good enough to make this. And all these strings are added, and he's trying to be emotional and sing, the, sing this sort of slow ballad, and it doesn't really work. Um, I nearly chose the Ringo track, A Man Like Me, which is a kind of copy of A Mouse Like Me from Scouse the Mouse. But at least that's got a a semi-decent tune, but this, this one, um, as far as I c we can go, yeah, the less said about it, the better, really. Number five, going to go to Memory Almost Full and the track Gratitude. I just find this song grating, um, musically in particular. Lyrically, it's, it's nothing to write home about either, and Paul's voice is kind of screeching and annoying. Um, by far the worst track on that album, and well, it's one of my least McCartney tracks, fa least favorite McCartney tracks ever. Um, number six, going to go back to the Shanghai Surprise soundtrack again with Hottest Gong in Town. This is just a throwaway song which George put into the movie when they needed a song of that nature, just nothing for me. And then to round off the album, we've got the 1985 single Spies Like Us, which has quite a decent guitar riff, but the words are just annoying and you can tell it's going to be a poor song just by looking at the cover and uh, you know I, the words are terrible um, I just don't know what to say about that track but I mean and all the best came out in 87 the compilation and of course it wasn't on there because it didn't do very well in the charts and McCartney I don't think rates it very well himself he's never played it in concert and why would he um, so that was my low lights of the Beatles solo careers. As you can see, I've got no latter day Ringo in there. Um, I could have chosen a few B-sides, like the second disc of this complete works from off the ground, a load of B-sides, which are very forgettable. Um, what else could I, I could have, I, I suppose I could have gone for other more recent album tracks, but I, t I tried to keep it kind of as you, well, if you count them up, there's 10 of the 14 songs from the 80s, so that probably says something about the 80s for you. Um, sorry, there's nine, nine songs from the 80s and one from the 70s, so I know when you do your list, Matt Williamson, you're, you're going to choose a, a few more 70s selections. I don't find any of the 70s Beatles solo output annoying as songs. I really can't think of one example. 
um, maybe the chorus of get on the right thing if, I'm, if you're pushing me but and bits of long haired lady I find annoying but on the whole I, I, I couldn't put any of those on, on this hypothetical compilation album thanks for watching see you next time